food touches everybody across um, every culture, community. It's something that everybody needs every day. Everybody has some connection to food, some memory. When I think of the first memories, I have to go back to where I grew up in the West Indies, Trinidad specifically. Sundays were always a feast. I almost think about Sundays as a feast, the way folks celebrate Thanksgiving in this country where it's a big event. But for Sundays, you know, the, 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 the ritual of church, the ritual of coming home, the ritual of, quote, killing a chicken, the ritual of saving the blood so that you can make a blood pudding to be part of the breakfast, and then the ritual of singeing that chicken and getting the feathers off and being able to cut it up to all the pieces because everything had to be eaten in that chicken. When I was growing up, I always used to hang out in the kitchen with my mom and dad while they cooked and tell them about my day. Just hang out. My parents were divorced, so always cooking dinner on the weekends was like a time where I would hang out and talk to them and just sort of learn to cook by watching them. The injustice is what really inspires me. I became more and more passionate about the kind of injustices that took place, and so that my whole career is really around social justice. Food just seemed like one of the central themes that basically said, if we could get something going around food in terms of food justice, availability of food, and we were very naive, we went out and bought a farm, but thinking we could feed the community. When we found at Corbin Hill Food Project, most people do not realize that 11 of us got together to put up at 700,000, we started as a for-profit, and that 72% uh, of all that, those funds came from blacks and Latinos. It meant we had our own voice in defining ourselves. I don't want to just be in the food distribution system. I want to wreck the whole system and redesign it. That's what I want to do. I wouldn't say wreck it, but I mean to say I want to redefine what it is and how it should operate as opposed to simply saying, I collect food, I distribute food, I collect a check. Corbin Hill is really um, at a point now where we're moving sort of beyond just doing our two core programs, Farm Share and Wholesale, to really think about what are the different ways that we can operationalize food sovereignty. So looking at different points along the supply chain that we can create um, more ownership in the system. So how can we utilize existing community assets that are sort of underutilized or unused at all and lift them up to develop a food distribution system outside of um, the traditional conventional supply chain. No one sector is going to really solve any of these problems. And so nonprofits are going to find themselves having to relate to, deal with, and integrate themselves and be able to work with uh, other sectors. If you really want to solve this problem, a nonprofit by itself can't do it. It may lead, but it has to rethink what that leadership means and what that mix of, of entities that need to be at the table to make change. We want to talk about another set of values that has to deal with racial equity. We want to talk about ownership. We want to talk about, about wealth. We want to talk about all of these pieces within the food chain that we're not part of. We're just simply, you know, there's a failure to understand that we in our community are economic citizens. And we need to be able to be treated as such. We're not just simply passive recipients of food. We should be able to decide what we want to grow and what we want to eat. Sovereignty, racial equity, and shifting of power become the central themes that govern everything that we do, even with our mission. Within the work that Corbin Hill does, we really start with community, and it's about figuring out, okay, identifying like, what are the challenges that the communities um, have come across and what are the challenges that we've come across and providing them with fresh food and working with them to create solutions that are really, um, community-owned solutions. What are the assets that they have? How can those be utilized in developing a solution rather than us just coming to them with, oh, this is how we think that we can um, get more food to your communities and really having them be a part of the, the solution process, which can be challenging um, and it takes more time, but ultimately it's gonna lead to a more sustainable long-term um, solution. The movement has to begin at the bottom. Let's shift power and let's talk about sovereignty. Let's, let's bring the community voice to the table. 
Let's be, let the community be part of that decision-making process. Let us deal with the issue of racial, racial equality. Remember something, you don't have the answers. The people you serve have the answers, and you've got to go to them and ask them what do they want. Leadership is uh, really the, the ability to bring together a number of people uh, so that they can share a set of values to address a particular problem. And the sharing of values and, and agreeing for the definition of the problem itself is itself a leadership. You need leadership to be able to do that. Leadership means um, a lot of different things. Um, it means taking risks and listening to people and um, guiding people. I would say that Dennis inspires me a lot. I think that um, in many ways we balance each other really well. Um, he is not afraid to take risks at all and comes up with crazy ideas and um, he's not afraid to say what needs to be said and he always challenges me to think um, beyond sort of what I, like my first my first thought and really strive to really focus in on the values of sovereignty and racial equity, which I think is really important.